Hi, so I am a youth organizer for Planned Parenthood Texas Votes, but I focus my work on abortion rights and reproductive health care policy. I haven't always been an organizer, but I've always been some sort of activist, and we're technically all activists. So this slideshow starts in 2010, but technically my work started around 2005 when I first heard Anti-Flag for the first time. Um, I grew up listening to punk music, so I was kind of indoctrinated into politics at an early age, listening to bands not only like Anti-Flag, but Subhumans and Minor Threat, learning about the Iraq war that was going on at the time, and trying to do something as a young person with no voice. Um, so I was born and raised here in Brownsville, Texas, and I am a Chicana, and I have had to face a lot of systematic issues. Um, so growing up, I didn't know, but I always assumed that I was middle class, totally fine, um, was gonna go out into the world and just be a no another regular person, but I guess I was wrong. So growing up, I faced a lot of things like machismo and um, racism systematically, um, systematic racism and economic barriers. Um, so around 2012 was when I actually started defining myself as an activist. And um, the first thing I could pinpoint was in 2010. One of the government teachers at the local high school had asked everybody in the class to attend a local Tea Party rally against Obama for extra credit. And needless to say, I was super annoyed. And so I decided to go out there in my Obama shirt and hand out some flyers with accurate and correct information about the Obama administration. And there I thought it would just be a cool thing for me to do to go out and counter protest. But I quickly learned that a 16-year-old girl in an Obama shirt at a predominantly older male rally was something really dangerous. And I got harassed to the point where, in this photo, you can see that I flipped my shirt around and covered the back. <laughs> um, but yeah, that was my first grapple. But I really liked it. I liked going out there and telling people um, you know, your ideologies are oppressive and they hurt other people that, you know, don't look like you. So I graduated in 2012 and I decided to move to Austin, Texas um, because I really liked politics and art, but I didn't know what I wanted to do at the time. So in 2013 was Wendy Davis's notorious filibuster against the horrible anti-choice, anti-abortion law in Texas, um, which outlawed um, not outlawed, which um, put, placed many barriers on abortion access, which disproportionately affected abortion access here in the Rio Grande Valley to the point where there was only one barely accessible clinic in McAllen and started a lot of issues here where women had to go through horrible and strenuous challenges to just achieve um, a, healthcare, a healthcare issue that is a human right. Um, so that was my first real national protest, and I was out there with Wendy Davis and other strong Texas women fighting for abortion access, and there was the first time that I realized that my voice could be heard even though I was, at the time, 19 years old, and I didn't really know much, and I had really bad imposter syndrome, but I still felt like I could and needed to do something for my community while I was in Austin. So after that, I signed up to be a Planned Parenthood volunteer, and while I was living in Austin, I would do um, different things. I would table on campus and give out resource information. I would lobby at the Capitol, and I really found that I really loved it, but I particularly really loved talking to young people about civic engagement and politics because it's something that people have a stigma against and don't feel is something very polite to talk about, and that's all I talk about. So. There you go. <laughs> but in the 2015-2016 legislative session, the Texas legislature decided to um, funnel money away from Planned Parenthood so that way they wouldn't be able to um, provide early breast and cervical cancer screenings. And I also found out that this would disproportionately impact um, cancer, screenings of uh, cancer screening availability here in the Rio Grande Valley, which really disgusted me because this was only a result of 
systematic racism, classism, and sexism, because cancer screenings are non-political in the same way that you know, you know, getting your foot checked is. It's like they're putting barriers on something that is necessary and something that also affects the Latino population at higher rates than it does other populations. And so the budget ended up passing and the only person who could change this was the governor. And I decided to go outside of the governor's mansion and I stood outside of his mansion for 17 days for 12 hours a day to let him know that this was something really important to the people in the valley, but also something really disgusting that should be changed. Because again, cancer screenings are not a political issue, but he turned them into a political issue. Through this, we decided to not only engage in a direct action by standing outside, but we decided to do an online campaign as well for people who don't have um, physical access to go out to the mansion or people who are busy and things like that. We wanted to let everybody know at different angles this important issue and why it was important to the state of Texas and particularly why it was important to Latino and Chicano populations, especially in the South. And so at the end of the day, we had over 300 people attend the last rally and people were fierce and fighting and we were so ready to go out there and the governor just decided to let the budget pass as is. However, we did have support from strong Texas women like Wendy Davis, Cecile Richards, and other legislative um, and other politicians here in the state. Um, and that kick-started my, my whole life, basically. Um, I had, like I said, I had been a volunteer, but this time I decided I knew I wanted to be an organizer. I knew that I could do something for my community. And at the end of the day, I was just, you know, a regular person from Brownsville who decided to do something. And I realized that anybody could do whatever they wanted. Um, so fast forward to 2016. Um, so Stan with Sadie Hashtag gave me a lot of opportunities to talk about not only reproductive health care, but I decided to focus on abortion access because, again, it disproportionately impacted access in the Rio Grande Valley. So here I am, full circle. I started off my reproductive health care work at the HB2 protest, and here I am outside of the Supreme Court before the oral arguments against HB2. And so through my work, I've been able to access national publications, and um, I've decided to use my platform to focus on uplifting the issues here in the Rio Grande Valley. Not only have I been talking about reproductive health care issues, but we're also talking specifically about abortion access. And so we have, I have been able to talk about the Rio Grande Valley in places like Teen Vogue, Broadly, Yahoo, and even statewide pub publications like the Austin Chronicle and the Texas Tribune. And I have been afforded opportunities that other people cannot. And so I like to use that as a way to talk about issues in places like Washington, DC, where they don't really know what's going on here in the Rio Grande Valley. Um, but mostly, most of my work is on the ground. I moved back to Brownsville right after my stand with Sadie protest and decided that I needed to do work directly here on the ground with my community members. And I wasn't the first one doing um, abortion work, so I have to give credit to all those who have been doing this since day one while I was in another city. But we all decided to get together and we've been putting on different types of community events to educate everybody and let them know what's been going on. Not only do we table on campus, we have protests, we get to go to conferences and learn more about reproductive health care and policy, and we even put on an abortion play that was um, nationally recognized. Um, but I'm not the only one doing it. I like to go on Twitter, I like to write, and I like to be in Chingona and just like talk to everybody about politics and what's going on because it's really important. Um, but that's what I do. I did an online campaign because again, like I said, I like writing and Twitter. But that's not something that everybody likes to do. And so here you can see this is my friend Joe Ubayas. Joe is a local drag queen 
And Joe one day decided, if I'm already hosting drag events, if I'm the center of attention, I'm a man in a dress, everyone's already looking at me, and if they're already looking at me, I'm going to use it as a platform to talk about LGBTQ issues and healthcare access for our community here in the Rio Grande Valley, and talk about the importance of HIV AIDS education and safe sex. Here is my other friend, Catherine Torres, born and raised in the Valley as well, from McAllen. So she was organizing hardcore shows here, and she, every weekend her friends would go see some bands, and she realized, if one in every three women will have an abortion, and I'm already at these shows where all of my friends come, I can use it as an opportunity to raise money for our local abortion fund and give out reproductive health care resources to my friends. And here are my favorite people in the world, the RGV queens, the Poderosas. So what they do is, as older women, they are very family-oriented and culturally-oriented. And so what they do is they use cultural and local community events like Loteria, Zumba, and other, <laughs> other events to talk to people about safe sex, policy, and why it's important to be civically engaged. And they are also the ones who spearheaded the the HB2 oral arguments by collecting stories from around the Rio Grande Valley. But you know, you don't have to directly be out there and talk to people specifically about policy. You don't have to be at the protests to be an activist. You can use whatever talent and hobby that you already have and flip it into something better for the community. Right here is another friend of mine, also from Brownsville and McAllen, Natalia Rocafuerte, who talks about labor and immigrant rights through her art. Eduardo Martinez is a photographer and historian who used his love for history and photography to document not only the activism going around right now, but also the past um, labor and immigration rights movements here in the Valley. And you know, it doesn't have to be overtly about activism either. Someone else here, her name is Vettel. She is the CEO of Sparks Bracelets, and she took her love for fashion and accessories and turned it into a movement to where you can have different bracelets that spark conversations about mental illness and stigma. So you can do it too. Again, you don't have to you know, directly go out there and ask people to sign a petition. If you don't have time, you can wear a t-shirt from an organization you really care about. You can retweet that um, article that you thought was really interesting. Or you can just you know, donate money to your local organization so that way you can support the work on the ground that they're doing that you don't want to or aren't able to do. So how can you do this? It sounds really easy because it is really easy. Um, so the first thing you have to do is define yourself. What, who am I? How do these issues affect me? What issues do I really care about? As a Chicana from the Valley, I noticed that reproductive health care access was so, um, so oppressed here in the Valley. And I decided, um, as a Chicana, I was going to use my platform to talk about Latino-specific issues, because it's something that hasn't been talked about in the national media as much as I could. And how can I help? I really like Twitter. I was on Twitter all the time, retweeting stuff. I was reading articles, you know, trying to get into that because that's a hobby that I had. And do your research. You can't go out there and, you know, try to uplift information that you don't know is accurate or not. And so this is something I really emphasize. Please do your research and do it accurately. But it's not only about finding information about the issues that you care about, but it's also research on the ground. Are there organizations already doing this work? Is somebody doing something similar that I can join into um, and we can collaborate? Or is this something that has already been done in the past that I can replicate? And then lastly, just get it done. Again, you know, go on Twitter, get on that hashtag, buy that t-shirt, or you know, submit your art. And it's something really easy that we can all do because it's all really important to us. And it doesn't have to be specifically about politics. It can be something as easy as, hey, my neighbor can't feed their kids this week. Can you, um, I will sell you cupcakes so that way we can buy them some groceries. You know, it doesn't have to be something political or, you know, controversial, but just something that's important to you to help your community. Um, and thank you, and I hope you all leave here trying to be a chingona, because that's the best thing you can be. Thank you. Thank you.